Now we are going to study that uh, what is the main cause behind the frictional electricity. As you already know about the nature of matter now. So I have told you that there are uh, free electrons which can actually transfer and that transfer of electrons can make the body charged. So we will see here that how the electron transfer occur. So let's say that this is my glass rod and I am going to rub it with silk cloth. This is my silk cloth. So what happened when I rub glass rod with silk cloth then what happened there occur an electron transfer. So what we see that in glass rod electrons are not tightly bounded. Electrons are not tightly bounded as compared to the silk cloth. In silk cloth in comparison the there are tightly bounded electrons. Then what happened when we rub glass rod with silk cloth because electrons are not tightly bound electrons get transferred from glass rod to silk cloth. So as a result the atoms of glass rod will not uh, remain neutral because the electrons are going so that means what charge will exceed in them obviously positive charge. So we say that glass rod acquires a positive charge. And because silk cloth is gaining electrons, so that is why it acquires a negative charge. So th that means the uh, transfer of electrons are taking place and due to which they are acquiring a charge and they become uh, from uncharged to a charged body. Likewise, if I have an ebonite rod, let's say this is my ebonite rod, I'm going to rub it with wool. Let's say this is my wool wool. So what happened? Here when I rub with ebonite rod with wool, electrons flow from wool to ebonite rod. Electrons flow from wool to ebonite rod. So as a result it acquires a negative charge and it acquires a positive charge. So that means these bodies are become a charged body. So this is what is an, uh, uh, this thing, uh, the electron transfer concept which we can explain the reason behind the frictional electricity. Now we will talk about the laws of electrostatic repulsion and attraction. I will illustrate with few activities. See, I have glass rod. Let's say this is my glass rod. Right. I am going to take one more. This is my stand and I am going to suspend with the thread one glass rod. Right. So what I have done is this is my glass rod A and this is my glass rod B. So what I have done is I have rubbed this glass rod with silk. So when I know when I rub the glass rod with silk it acquires a positive charge. So let's say this is positively charged. So I have suspended this positively charged glass rod with the help of thread as you can see. Now this glass rod B is, a, is a also rubbed with silk cloth. So again that means it is also because we know that when we rub with glass rod with silk the electron transfer occur from glass rod to silk. So again it is again a charge and it is also having a positive charge. So when I try to bring this glass rod uh, towards this glass rod which is suspended. So what we see that they repel each other. They start moving away. They move far apart. That, that means they repel each other because they both have same charges. Now what I do is I uh, this thing bring the ebonite rod. This is my ebonite rod. I have rubbed this ebonite rod with the woolen cloth. So due to which it acquires a negative charge it becomes charged. Now when I try to bring this ebonite rod towards this charged glass rod I will see that it will start moving towards itself because the both will start uh, moving uh, towards closer because they will attract each other. Now what is the reason that it is repelling this glass rod and it is attracting this ebonite rod? The reason is that because they both after rubbing with silk cloth acquires a same charge. So they tend to when we try to approach, close, uh, approach them closer they will start moving away. Likewise when uh, we try to make the ebonite rod closer to glass rod because it has acquired a different charge, a negative charge and it has already a positive charge. So they will attract, they will tend to come closer to each other. So that means the same charges repel and opposite charges attract each other.
right so this is what is the law of the electrostatic repulsion or attraction which we see actually so obviously uh, we conclude from this that obviously after uh, rubbing uh, the bodies become charged and the charge uh, that is the um, uh, the type of charges body is going to get depends upon the transfer of electrons if the electrons is transferred from one body to another the one which is losing will acquire a positive charge and one which is gaining is going to acquire a negative charge and the bodies uh, which will have same charge they will tend to move away and the bodies with opposite charge will tend to come closer right so this is what is the law of electrostatic repulsion and attraction now coming on to the next topic that uh, we have conductors and insulators conductors are those which have free electrons and due to this free electrons there can be a transfer of free electrons and they conduct electricity they conduct electricity insulators are those which possess no such free electrons that means there cannot be no such transfer of electrons and that is the reason they do not conduct electricity so that means the reason behind conduction of electricity is merely the free electro presence or absence of free electrons now uh, examples like most of the metals they are uh, conductors and if we talk about distilled water distilled water is poor conductor but a tap water is good conductor because tap water have many ions in it so it has certain impurities also which make a water good conductor and uh, otherwise non metals if we talk about non metals non metals are bad conductors they are bad conductors but we see certain exception like graphite the tap water they are good conductor so this is what is the conductor and insulator so that means presence of free electrons make the substance conductor uh, uh, conductor or or the absence of free electrons make the substance insulator and also the electrons are tightly bound or less tightly bound or the availability of that means the transfer we can say because whenever the transfer of electrons can take place it will allow the current to pass and that means it is a conductor and if it doesn't allow so that means it is an insulator because there are no such electrons which can transfer so it will not allow the passage of current because there will be no electrons so though no flow of electrons no flow of electrons means no electric current so that means it is a poor conductor that is an insulator so this is what about the basic now we are going to study that how we can actually charge the body and what are the basic methods we can involve in charging the body